What's up guys? It's Lance back with another interview. Today we have Coach Thomas Valles from uh, McFarland High School out in McFarland, California. How's your day been, Coach? Really good, son. Good job. Thank you, Lance. So some of Coach Valles' accomplishments. In 1987, he's finished seventh individually for state and also won the team title. He also highlighted Hispanic Heritage Month in 2019. He's the head coach at McFarland, McFarland High Schools for Girls Cross Country, and also is one of the main characters in the Disney's McFarland. So it's a great movie. I suggest you check it out. So first question, when did you take over at um, McFarland? Oh, I, I'm going to say, uh, well, in 2016, I was the assistant coach uh, to Alma Rayon, one of my best friends, and then 27th assistant and then uh 20 oh you know what I'm, I'm a little ahead of myself so I, i've been the head coach for the last two years and then the two years prior to that i was the assistant so with your coaching did it start at mcfarland or did you go somewhere else originally you know what i've only just coached here mcfarland but you know i coached the mcfarland parks and rec program which is kind of like a feeder program uh, for the high school and then and then the junior high started a program and I coached there a couple of years uh, And then eventually I moved up to the high school when my daughter went to high school So I know you probably get asked these a lot did this actually happen? I'm only gonna ask two. I'm not gonna try to annoy you in the um, Movie it said when you were at the line it said you play golf and then <laughs> this ain't golf. Did you actually say that? You know what no uh, it, that that was Hollywood. They added on there, uh, but in, you know that, that was Hollywood. But I, I use it now. Uh, you know, I like to take pictures in front of, uh, like in our in that park that I said that the, for the McFarland Parks and Rec. There's a sign out there that says no golfing. So I like to stand by, take pictures, and then throw out there in social media. Uh, you know, but we don't play golf out there. We run is what we do. And then one last one. I know when you made state uniforms, the new ones, did it actually, did she actually spell them wrong or was that just put again? Uh, you know what, McFarland has spelled things wrong more than one time, more than one occasion. <laughs> <laughs> so what is, how was Coach White as a coach? Uh, you know, he, he was a, you know, he was a patient man, but he, you know, demanding when it came down to, to actual practice. Um, very encouraging, very positive man. Um, just, just you know, wanted to change your attitude, to have a good attitude all the time, no matter what life throws at you. Um, and so, you know, Mr. White helped me out a lot, not just myself, but other athletes that come through the program. And, you know, he's, um, you know, everybody considers, the, you know, kind of like a father figure here in the community in McFarland. And, you know, he's still around, still helping out. So when did he stop coaching or is he still on the squad? No, Mr. White, uh, well, Mr. White, I think retired 16, 17, 18 years ago. That's when he retired from, from uh, teaching and coaching. Um, and, you know, he was a PE teacher for several years. He was my PE teacher in junior high. And then, you know, that's when I first met him in seventh grade. Um, that's when I was really introduced to the sport of, of competitive running. Um, I know the movie shows that, you know, he showed up in one year. And he had a state championship. So, so I traveled throughout the United States and share my story. And so I, you know, I tell kids, you know, the audience, you know, if, you know, if only things were like that, you know, in life were that easy. Uh, but, you know, we, we had a lot of challenges growing up. And, uh, you know, Mr. White's the one that showed us, you know, how to set goals and, and uh, you know, how to be better citizens. And so, uh, so you know, Mr. White, um, You no, know, had been here, you know, for the program in 1980, actually. Uh, but you know, he had been teaching here since, I believe, 1963 or 64. So in the movie, it appeared you had a lot of hardships at home life. What kept you motivated to keep running? Uh, you know, just the environment that in my own home. Um, you know, I come from, a, you know, my dad was an alcoholic. Um, parents divorced before I got to high school. Um, so in junior high, when I was, you know, got introduced to running. Uh, you know, I didn't compete a whole lot my seventh grade year. I just financially, I couldn't do it, uh, you know. But and then, um, 
by the time my eighth grade came around, my, my dad was out of the house and you know, Mr. White helped me quite a lot, bit. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I aspired to be like the, the guys that were running high school that, you know, I would see them run league meets. Uh, Mr. White would get, you know, some parents are going to go watch their kids run that they're in high school. Hey, you know, take up Thomas and take him to a, to this meet. And I go watch a track meet. Um, and, you know, I just love watching these high school guys run. And uh, I inspired, you know, whether one day I'm going to, I'm going to beat these guys' records. And, you know, that's what I wanted to do. And, and you know, so Mr. White showed you how to work hard and, and um, you know, you know, he didn't want you to be a part-time runner just to run during the season. So growing up, I remember all the teams, you know, you know, they looked up to McFarland. We were the best team in the county. Uh, not the best team in the section, but the best team in the county. And But the thing is, Mr. White had you run all summer long during the off season, and, and nobody did that back then. Nobody did. You know, everybody said, hey, why would you run during the off season? Well, now, I don't know any team that doesn't run during the off season. So you said Mr. White was a big role. Was he, like, <clears throat> excuse me. When did he start impacting your life? You said you met him, was it seventh grade? Mm -hmm. Seventh grade. I, you know, right away. You know, right away, um, you know, he, um, you know, I knew he was my PE teacher. Um, I didn't know he coached at the high school level. And he, he uh, you know, he let me know that, hey, you know, Thomas, I don't know if you know this, but I coach cross country and track um, at the high school level. And, and he told me, hey, you know, if you were to dedicate a summer, so here I am in seventh grade, I mean, if you were to dedicate a, whole, dedicate a whole summer running, you know, I think by the time you get into eighth grade, you'd a few, few meets, I think you'd be pretty good. And so I, I ended up doing that. Um, and, you know, just like in the movie, you know, Mr. White would be on his bike and, you know, I'd be running behind all these high school kids, boys and girls. It wasn't just boys. So was running like your main focus at the time or did you have other things like other sports? Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't do any. I, you know, I, I wrestled one year in high school, but I didn't do any other sports. You know, I dreamed about playing like, you know, baseball, Little League baseball or, you know, because when I get off work during the summer, you know, we would drive over the Perkins Bridge and I'd see the light down uh, in the baseball field. And I'd say, oh, you know, one day I want to play down there. I never did. Uh, but I ended up coaching my kids, my own kids in that same park. I dreamed about, <laughs> excuse me, about playing baseball. But, you know, I coached my own kids, T-ball and stuff like that down there eventually. Uh, but, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's how, uh, Mr. White, you know, got me to start running. He just encouraged me to do it and picked me up one day at the house. And, um, uh, I did about four miles that summer. And, uh, and when Mr. White, you know, as the other group of runners, they actually had already ran, they had ran to my, had run to my house and, uh, and he was just riding on his bike and, and he tells me to jump in here. And I did. And um, four miles later, he dropped me off and, you know, the other athletes kept running home. So obviously they ran further than I did because they ran before they got to my house and they ran afterwards. And I ran a total of four miles that summer day or evening. And, uh, you know, he stopped in my house on, his, on, a, on my driveway and patted me on the back and said, hey, good job, Thomas. I'm proud of you. And, you know, that made me feel good. I said, you know, I'm going to keep doing this. And uh, it was just some little words of encouragement. That, that's all it took for me to something somebody told me something positive um and so that's that's you know that's that's how i got started so now like you said you're the girls cross country coach so what do you do different from what you did when you were in high school uh try to have a lot of patience <laughs> you know so <laughs> you know i i i, I um you know the the workouts are the same for the most part, uh, the mileage is not as big as, as I did. You know, in high school, I, you know, I was running 60, 70 miles a week in high school. Um, and, you know, that's what I did when I w went on and ran collegiately. But uh, my girls, they, they, they float around between 25, 35 miles a week. Uh, we're not a high mileage team. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I like them to stick around and, and kind of run all four years. So, but that's all they do. So I, I got, I'm really senior heavy right now. Uh, we did a run to the lake on the canal, just the canal that they show in the movie. Uh, when I think Johnny's trying to recruit somebody to go off to the team, that same canal. Uh, so I ran on that canal today with the girls and they ran out to the lake and, and almost all the way back. I ended up picking them up. They did about 
Some girls did six and some girls did seven and a half. I did five altogether. I had to go back and pick up my, get my truck to pick them up. So what was it like to be the talk of the town as a cross country team? I remember here we won a state title in 2014 and it has been a long time since that happened in St. Joe. So yeah, we were just there for a bit. So what was it like yeah. to get that? You know what? Um, I, I just remember winning it and you know, we, you know, I, I don't want to say we were talk of the town. It, you know, it lasted a while till people forget. And then, then we would get reminded every time when Mr. White, uh, cause we won it in 87 and then the next two years, um, I don't think it, they didn't place the next year in 88. They didn't place. Uh, they were favored to win it, but that's a story for another day for somebody else. <coughs> Excuse me, that was on that team. Uh, uh, preferably Johnny San Diego. <laughs> and then uh, the, in 89, uh, the Moss Diaz and Johnny San Diego's senior year, uh, they were second in state. Second in state. Um, and then after that, I think Mr. White went on and won five in a row. He was either five in a row or three in a row. Five in a row, three in a row. And then he went back two years where they either didn't take a team to state or they didn't place the state, and then they won three in a row. So it was the five in a row, and there was three in a row, and then we were the first state championship. So that, that was the, the total of nine. Mr. White uh, won. Is that five in a row? Yeah, and, you know, I, at one time it was a state record. I don't think it's a state record now. It's been broken. Um, and even a nine state title at one time was a state record, but that's been broken as well. I did see that um, McFarland did have 23 or 24 consecutive state appearances. So that's pretty uh, Yes, and that and. That ended, that ended uh, my son Tommy, I believe he might have been a junior or senior when that happened. Uh, but you know what, it, we should have been there. Uh, we were, you know, we were talking about the division, how you're in a small division. Uh, we're a true division four school. There's one more division smaller than us, which is division five, which is an enrollment of 500 and under. Um, we're, we're, we're about, a, we're somewhere around a thousand right now. And that, that would be a considered a division uh, four school in California, but we are not in that division. Um, so, so that year we were division one. So we're, they're competing against the big schools um, uh, from our section. So our, our, I don't know if you guys have, if you have, you probably have regionals to qualify for state. Yeah. But we have, yeah. we have sectional sections, and so, um, so, we have a model here in in the well, it's in all sports in California, but the central section I believe is the only one that does it in cross country, where uh, if you're a little too successful in one division, which we were, they bumped us up to the next division. Uh, to compete against teams that had a higher enrollment than us. And so the year that they broke their streak, they were competing in Division One, which is, you know, I, don't, I can't even tell you, over two, way over 2,000 to 3,000 students is the division that they were in or trying to get to state. Now you said regional qualifies. Do you have regionals and then sectionals or sectionals? No, our, sectional? our, our, our sectionals is what qualifies us for state in California. Okay. That's what we do over um, here for middle school. So what was it like to grab, collaborate with Disney? We've had, Disney has everyone, like the big companies nowadays. So what was it like? Uh, you know, my, my recollection is, you know, over the years is, is, is uh, you know, the idea of the movie was back in the late 90s when we were all young in our careers. And I'm talking about the seven individuals that were on the state championship in 87. We were all young in our careers when the idea became about a book and then a movie and it wasn't really about us, it was about Mr. White. And then we got involved when um, they bought, kind of, we signed contracts for them to buy our life rights, our life story. Um, and there was a script written, but you know, the script writ writ was written like, you know, I want to say 2000 or 1999, somewhere in that. Um, but the, nobody ever invested in the script. But in uh, 2010, 2011, Disney bought it. And then they changed the script. Uh, 
they changed the script after they purchased it. So they have the original script and they changed wording around it to make it a Disney movie. Um, and so, uh, so they filmed it in 2013 uh, and then it was released in 2015. So, you know, that's five years ago that it came out. So, you know, it came out in 2015. They thought, you know, the idea of the movie came out within a couple of years of that time, but no, the idea was actually back in 1998, 99, 1998, somewhere around there. See, I would have never known that. That is, that's crazy. Like that Disney was the one that bought it. Like it could have been anyone and it was Disney. Yeah. Yeah. So I know it's probably had a big impact. So what is the movie had? How was it changing? You got to cut out their, their lance a little bit. Repeat that question, please. How has this movie changed your life? Uh, well, you know what? I, I, um, I retired from work a couple of years ago and at the end of 2018, um, kind of took a leap of faith that I could, uh, you know, I, you know, I've been blessed, you know, you know, you know, I used to say Disney gave us a platform to do what I do and what do my teammates do? But actually, you know, God gave us a platform to do what we do. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, I, I retired at the end of 2018 and, and I, I, I started, you know, speaking at school, sharing my story. Um, and so I, I traveled throughout the United States and, uh, you know, I, I start off with one school um, and I have a lot of connections on social media, uh, friends, coaches, and if I can land, you know, a commitment by one school, I'll, you know, I'll look my look on my map on a map on map quest okay let's see who else do i know in the area and i let coach bronson hey coach bronson i'm going to be in the area on such and such date visiting the school speaking you know would you be interested and says yeah let me check with my administration and and so you know i think that the more schools i can do while i'm in the area the better it is for everybody and so you know that's so that's what i do so i i just came back from texas uh earlier this this here in december and then November, I didn't go anywhere. And then uh, at the end of, end of October, I was in Texas as well. And then I ended up in, in Texas in December here because I was in October with some connections I made. So it's about networking. And just because of this last trip I made here in, uh, here in December, I'm, I'm going back in January to, to uh, West Texas, the Panhandle, to speak at a few schools. And I, and I enjoy doing it. It's, uh, um, you know, so I, so I, I just went out, month out of state to, uh, to go uh, to story. So what is your advice to any runner, middle school runner, high school runner, college runner, whatever? What is your biggest advice that you can get of, give them? Well, you know what? You, you have all types of talent levels. You have, um, you know, I, I just started following this. I don't know what it is, like YouTube video. Um, young man named Phil, who's a local runner from Fresno, and uh, um, and another kid who they started this channel and 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 it you know it's a lot of fun to watch, um, but I, I think they're they're in a position where where they can influence whether they're great runners or or uh, you know because these kids are the cream of the crop, some of the kids that they train with. Um, but, you know, no, nobody, not everybody's at that level. Now, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if your goal is to, to finish the season. It, you know, I encourage kids to, to, to run it. it. You know, it's good for you. It's healthy. Um, and, and, you know, it creates a bond. It, 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 you know, it's my second family. I, I, I know we all want to compete and do our best. But, you know, what is the best? Is it? the goal to, to make the varsity maybe for some kids it is for some kids it's just to be a part of something to be accepted and 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 contribute something and putting on that uniform wearing that logo that that brand across your chest that represents you know your your school your community um and you know what growing up you know you know we, we were we don't we weren't always the best behaved kids and mr white always reminded us hey guys come over here quick real quick and you know we'd be at like a i don't know mcdonald's or a Taco bell he says hey guys you know I know you guys are having fun and uh, just don't get out of hand because remember, look at your uniforms, your uniforms, you know, right on your chest, they say where you're from. And you know what? I don't want to get those phone calls from people. Hey, these guys are misbehaving. 
And, and not that we ever, Mr. White ever did it. In fact, it was the opposite. We'd always, um, you know, our, our, our administration would get phone calls. Hey, you know what? I saw your team at this restaurant and I just want to commend you how great they were, how well they were behaved. And so, you know, when you compete for somebody, you represent somebody and you, you, uh, you want to, you want to, you know, be positive person in the community. And so that's why, uh, that's why uh, I, you know, I encourage kids to, to be part of something positive. So when you go to schools, what is your main message? Uh, you know what, that, that, you know, ev you know, everybody has challenges in life. Um, and I've definitely had mine and, and, you know, setbacks and, you know, you know, I, I share right away, you know, what's Hollywood about the movie that the movie, sh you know, shows that you know, Mr. White showed up in one year and they had a state championship, but, you know, I tell kids, you know, if only things in life are that easy, uh, you know, anything worth accomplishing, accomplishing life takes work, effort, setting goals. And, you know, there's going to be setbacks. And, you know, I talked about, I talk about my setbacks, you know, in life, uh, not just in, in eighth grade, but in high school. Um, in college, uh, you know, I, I talk about it, the many setbacks I had and why things, you know, I made four choices and, you know, you know, I'd have to take a step back. You know, I either was ineligible in college because I, I hung out with the wrong guys. Uh, you know, in junior high, I'd hang out with the wrong guys. And Mr. White would remind me, hey, you know what, Thomas? Because hanging out with those guys is not going to lead you in, lead you, you know, anywhere. And so, you know, so the right thing for me to do is, is to stay focused on the sports. And, you know, I, I struggled in school um, growing up. I, I know I'm dyslexic. I, you know, always had trouble reading, writing, and, you know, comprehending and stuff. And, you know, I always knew I had trouble. And, and not that I wasn't, didn't know it at the time, but I really wasn't giving it 100% in school. Uh, and then Mr. White called me out on it in junior high and said, hey, you know what, Thomas, you need to start up a little more effort in your education because when you get to high school, and we're just talking high school, because if you don't make grades, you're not going to wear a uniform. You're not going to get, a, uh, get on the bus and you're not going to make these trips. Oh man, there's, there's no way I got, I got to, I got to get on it. So I started doing a little bit better in school. Um, not that I ever had the, I, I never took any of the four classes to go into like a division one school, but I ended up having to go to a community college, which was nothing wrong with that. And I followed a couple of my good friends who for sure four year caliber um, students, maybe not runners, but students to, 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 to four, four year schools. And, but you know, they wanted to compete. So they, they went to a community college and, and they graduated the year before I did. One was Almond Rayon, who is the um, boys cross country coach now. And then David Diaz, who is the oldest of the Diaz brothers. Um, he, they went to a college to Coyas and Visalia, ran for coach Bronson. And so I simply followed him when I graduated high school. Um, um, ran really good the first year. We had a really good team. Um, we ended up fifth in state, but we were second in conference to, to a, a team that ended up winning state. We should have been second in state, but, you know, one of our runners didn't have his best race. And <coughs> he went from first man to our fifth man or sixth man. And um, we ended up fifth. And, and uh, you know, the next year I came back to run and was ineligible, made four choices. And, and you know, it happens. And, and you know, somebody had to you know, kind of, hey, Thomas, what, what are we doing here? What are we doing? And it wasn't my mom and dad. It was, it was Mr. White. He said, hey, what are you doing in Visalia? What do you, what do you, you know, you got to, so you got to, you got to focus. And what was the goal? Was to, to run and go to school. And so I ended up having to take some summer classes uh, to get eligible. And I ended up going back and finishing my eligibility my third year. Um, and after that, I ended up getting a Division II scholarship uh, to Cal State University of Bakersfield. Which is a it's a Division One school now, but but uh, but uh, which is just up the road from us here. So um, you probably have a lot, but what is your biggest accomplish as a runner? Because I know mine. Um, last year we got third at state for cross country, so that was a big thing. And like with saying, like you're representing not only your school but everyone in that town. Like we got the trophy presentation at the school, and that was it was just crazy to me. Like. I'm a middle schooler. I got third at state. Like, that's just awesome to me. Well, you know what? As a middle schooler, that's, that's probably uh, awesome. But when you get to my age, you're going to look back and, and 
you know, I look back, you know, I thought it was about winning medals and trophies. And which, at your age, that's awesome. In high school, it's about winning medals and trophies. Um, so, I, you know, I share when I go speak that the movie does not depict the worst. I had it growing up in McFarland, and it doesn't depict the best. So the worst for me was not, you know, them showing my dad having a couple of beers in the movie. Because, you know, my dad was an alcoholic. They show a little bit of domestic violence, you know, but I, my mom suffered years of, of abuse over years to leave divorce in eighth grade. And so I share those stories when I go speak. And so that's kind of like the worst, the reality of it. And the best for me in life are, is not winning medals and trophies or winning a state championship um, when I was in high school. It's what we did afterwards, you know, our education, our careers, my family, and what we do in the community of McFarland now. And that, that's, that's what I'm most proud of. So thank you so much, Coach Valles, for doing this with me today. No, thank you, Lance, for having me, and, and thank you for reaching out. I appreciate it. Anytime. See you, Coach. God bless.